they send all the plastic on air. It's quite a special one today uh, because we're going to address a topic that is extremely current uh, in the world, maybe not so current in science museums, and uh, that's the topic we will discuss today with our uh, friend and colleague from uh, uh, the Oasis in uh, Thessaloniki, uh, Tanasis. Uh, and uh, we are very happy that we, we found uh, your institution very recently uh, being very active uh, in addressing problems of refugees. And uh, it's a discussion that has been going on in our field for about two years now. So we know that there is a big problem uh, with uh, refugees and, and, and immigration in, in, in Europe, but also all over the world. But do we have to address that at all as a science center? Is it not good enough for us to do just what we are doing well uh, to, 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 uh, to address that issue? Or do we need to do uh, specific things? And uh, in Thessaloniki, uh, you have decided to do something specific uh, on this regard. But before we go into that, Tanasis, uh, uh, thank you for, for accepting that uh, conversation. And please, uh, tell us a little bit about you. I know you were an engineer uh, and, and you were in the Science Center for 10 years before becoming uh, uh, the Director General there. Now, just let, tell us a little bit about you. How, how, how did you get there? Okay. Hello. Good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation. We have the ability to to have an interview with you. My name is Tanashko Benzola, as you say. I'm the general director of, of Noises from 2010. I am in the science in the Noises. In 2003, I started as an electrical engineer, supervising the construction of the project. Uh, and I stayed in the technical, uh, as a technical director since 2010. Then I became the general manager from 2010, organizing uh, the operation and the management uh, of the center the funding, the infrastructure, the staff evaluations, mm -hmm. the staff evaluations and other centers that we have and facilities. Very, very good, thank you. So if you have to say what noise is, is in a couple of words, what would you say? How would you describe your science center? Let's say that the uh, noise is a name that become uh, the Greek work new, which is the ability of a human being to think. Mm -hmm be capable of thinking. So we are a science center, we are a non-profit cultural organization, an educational organization. We are supervised by the Ministry of Education in Greece. And uh, our uh, scope and uh, role is to create an appropriate environment for informing the public in the latest developments in science and technology. Uh, we are operating a privately owned installation in Termi Thessaloniki, about square meters. Uh, and uh, the brand name of our center is to emphasize the connection between its operation and human life. So, uh, what uh, we, we are made of and what we are facility consisted that we have a planetarium, a digital planetarium. Uh, we also have a large format theater and uh, we also have a simulator area uh, with a uh, reality simulator and uh, all our films and the movies that we show is uh, they have a scientific theme about uh, all the... Also we have a few permanent exhibitions, uh, the one is the ancient Greek technology uh, the other is the, the, that, uh, the, the area that we call Techno Park, which is an interactive exhibit and uh, electronic games that uh, the students and people and visitors can learn uh, with a simple way uh, the law of physics. And uh, the other one is the Park Exhibition, which uh, has car models that mark the history of the automobile. Also, so, so your, yes. your, your, 
your target audience is more uh, the school students from high school or rather the younger kids? It's more high school. Yes, we have about 2,000 visitors per year. Most of them are students. From ages between, I say, five to twenty-five years old. Okay. All right. Great. So, thank you for introducing a little bit about your institution, and, and I can really uh, recommend uh, our, our viewers to go to the website uh, of, of your of your center because it's uh, it looks really spectacular, and uh, I'm really happy to have you with us. So, uh, we are going to address uh, today the way that uh, you were dealing with this. Uh, refugee issue in particular in your area. And so can you say a few words of how, how big the problem is in Thessaloniki with refugees? How many are there? Are there camps? And, and do you have an idea? Yes, I, we have an idea. Uh, the refugees come in Thessaloniki, cost about 8,000 refugees from Syria, Pakistan, and other countries, in Afghanistan, I will say. But uh, let's say that in Thessaloniki, it's not a major problem as it is in Lesbos, in Chios, and in the other island of Korea. Hmm. Uh, right now, we are in a program here in Thessaloniki to integrate refugees into our school and to become equal members of our society here in Thessaloniki. Hmm. So, this is going very well, I would say. Hmm. And uh, I believe in, till the end of this year, most of the refugees, they move from the refugees camp, but we know the conditions are not very good, as you say, and you know, and uh, they will become staying in a more better facilities and uh, condominiums and, uh, to, to become members of our society, uh, students of our schools, and to have the right to become part of our group. So what you're saying is that it's more a general policy of the city uh, to be welcoming for the refugees and trying to find solutions? I believe it's a, uh, it's a political, uh, let's say, decision to, to become refugees and to become members of our society. I believe there is no other way uh, for us except to integrate these people, to, to treat them with humanity and solidarity. And I believe in a few years, they will uh, have the same right and they will become uh, members of our society as we are. So that's, that's a quite interesting uh, point of view. And uh, you know, not everybody shares that necessarily all over the world. So that's, it's, it's quite intriguing. Uh, so, uh, in this regard, uh, and being part of a policy, you thought that the science center should take its place in this global vision of your of your city, or has someone asked you to do it, or is it an own decision? Uh, let's say it was a decision of our board of trustees to welcome welcome children from the refugee camps to offer them a scientific, educational, and social program. So, uh, I believe uh, with cooperation with the municipality of Fermi, municipality of Thessaloniki, with the United Nations, we were, uh, let's say, the first that we started the program to, to host the refugees in uh, our facility, to to treat them with humanity and solidarity and to degrade our facilities and uh, to become members of our society. So, uh, it's a decision. Uh, has the whole staff been on board with that from the beginning or did you have conversations inside of your museum to see if you were going to do that or not? Were there different opinions inside of your organizations about that? Here in our science center, I believe uh, the board of trustees, as well as all of our staff, I, we were very enthusiastic about the idea to, to host the refugees from, from the camps and near the So, uh, we felt it was really we, we could have done this 
people. So uh, I believe that they hear any noises and there were no other opinion about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so then you designed the program in your science center based on connections that we had with the, with the refugees, something that you thought would be serving them or something that they were asking you, how did you decide to make a program? What, what was the basis of the program that you built? Okay, the basic idea is to educate the, the refugees and to show them all the, the Greek culture and civilization in our permanent city that has to do with the ancient Greek technology. That was the basic idea. Uh, so, uh, we, we communicate at first with the United Nations. Okay. The refugee camp, in a refugee camp near to us, which is six kilometers far away, in Fermi, mm -hmm. and uh, we visit the place, we saw the conditions that they live, that the refugees live, and uh, we say with uh, the board of the city, so we must do something about that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was uh, then it was simple to to start to build the program uh, for uh, hosting the, the refugees in noises. Mm -hmm. We translate uh, a film in planetarium in their languages mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, with the same thing. We translate the film in large format theater, and we have our guide. We speak their language to tour the refugees in all our permanent exhibitions that we have. Mm -hmm. So we plan and the design a program for hosting the refugees about three hours in our science center, so to be, become familiar with that, with the Greek culture and uh, civilization that we have to offer here in our science center. So, if I understand well, uh, you basically have made what you already do accessible to them by translating them and finding guys who are able to do the tours of your museum in their language. Is that what it, what it is? Yes, yes, that's right. This is what it is. Uh, all right. So, do you have any kind of um, uh, feedback already from, from the, these refugees, the kids and the older people about how they, how they feel about this? Uh, we have a feedback that, uh, let's say, it's a feedback, uh, most of uh, it's, a, it's a relief for our souls to think what they do when they come to noises and when they, they, they leave from noises, when they, they left from us. I believe it's a feeling that, let's say, no money can buy. The kids, the refugees are very enthusiastic. Let's say it's a relief to them from uh, a break from the, the life that they live in, uh, in the camps. Uh, that's why they are very enthusiastic and uh, they have a great joy from and uh, they live with a better impression from us. Uh, it's a very touching to, to, to watch the kids to participate in our program and uh, to have so many questions to ask and, uh, and to, to want to become, to participate in, the, in our culture and our society. And, uh, that was something that I was going to ask you. Are the kids or young people that are standing up out of these camps who have scientific background, who know the topics that you are discussing and who could possibly be uh, involved uh, directly in the programs with you at some point? Yes. Uh, in, in the beginning, I would say our visitors were restrained. But as time passed and all, uh, all our society uh, became familiar with the program, uh, with, a, with a problem that we have in the refugee camp and the condition that the refugees live, uh, they want to participate also. And uh, I believe uh, in, uh, after uh, some period of two or three weeks, 
they treat them well with humanity and respect. Uh, let's uh, say that we are coming from a city with many immigrants. Greeks are immigrants all over the world. They started as immigrants all over the world. So we understand the human right of humanity among all people. So we have to, to, to no, we must have no fear, no, no prejudice, or uh, let's say due to color, due to nationality, to religion, mm -hmm. and uh, to become open minded. Mm -hmm. And is the is the things from the conversations and the questions that they have, uh, might you consider to build programs that you don't have, but new programs that would maybe respond to their interests? Yes, uh, we start to build a program uh, to to integrate these kids and the scientists from the refugee camp. Mm -hmm. That's not for them, but most of them are uh, were students mm -hmm. in the country, were uh, scientists, mm -hmm. were uh, teachers, were doctors. So uh, we try to plan a program. Uh, based on informatics, on robotics, as an educational program, and to discuss it with, uh, uh, with uh, the school districts that host the refugee children, and uh, offer an educational program in their schools. We have an educational program that we call it Pyramatics which is about uh, informing science and technology. And we plan and discuss with uh, the directors of schools to host it in their school. Mm -hmm. So what, you, what I'm hearing you say is that the refugees is not necessarily a problem, but it could be an asset as well. Of course. Yeah. Of course. They will be a great asset. Uh, in, I believe uh, they will offer a help to our country, mm -hmm. not only let's say, in uh, in the first level, but and, uh, become scientists and uh, become, uh, let's say, people. Uh, um, Maria, become. <laughs> To become our future, to become a part of our future. Well, <laughs> I, 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 so, uh, 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 maybe a very practical question now that you have these additional tasks that you take on, do you get support from the city to do that or do you do it on your own resources? Uh, right now, uh, we do it for, from our own resources. Uh, we don't have uh, help from the city. But uh, we have the cooperation. We hope that it will, uh, that uh, at the time being, we will, uh, they will offer us the help that we need to to continue this program. Mm -hmm. So, so the the reaction around you, the first reaction after implementing that with your staff. How how does your staff react now on, on doing this? <laughs> I believe it, uh, as I said, it's uh, very touching for the staff also mm -hmm. to, to, to become a part of the program uh, from the refugees. Mm -hmm. So, uh, staff that uh, guide the refugees, that uh, make uh, the, the hosting and uh, and the catering and the things that we offer, I believe we do it with a great joy. And uh, we like to continue the program as long as it is. And so that's your staff and yourself. And I understand that you are a very enthusiastic person. I really admire uh, the way that you look at these things. But uh, your audiences in, this, in the city, do they all accept it in the same way? Do they feel that is it something you should do, or do they feel that that's 
maybe not your world, how does your general audience feel about this? Do you have reactions from your, from your regular visitors on this? Uh, I will say for sure that the audience like the program that Moses offered to refugees. Uh, when we were in the beginning, as I said, the audience and the community was very plain and uh, not so minded. But as the time passing, uh, I believe the community understand the problem and uh, wants to participate like the program that Noises does and other programs from the refugees that uh, started in other regions in the organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, I believe that we have the, the result of uh, the refugees, they will become a member of our society. So it will take two or three years, but... Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a, a, a strong practice. Here in the United States, of course, they work, science centers work a lot with volunteers from the community to do programs. Uh, is that something that you do? And do you find that there are more people that are willing to support you to be able to carry that program? Yes, we have an interest, an interest uh, from uh, volunteers that we want to participate. Uh, also, in our facility, we went. Uh, we have for volunteers. We have about 120 volunteers okay. that most of them participate in the, to, to our actions in the community, and they want to participate in this program. Also. Okay. So, have you done any type of promotion of this idea to the rest of the field, or if it's just you know you did your own thing in your museum? Uh, but as, as I said, it looks like quite unique. Maybe it's a good idea to try to you know, communicate that to the larger field. What I'm trying to do right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we would like to to become a member of, uh, let's say, a network of science center museums that uh, with a program, with a European program, funding by the European Union, and called Horizon, I don't know if you heard about that or uh, It has a part of funding uh, with a theme of science with and for society. So, uh, in order to become, uh, to, to create a common program, uh, all science centers, the science centers that are interesting, all mm -hmm. science centers that are interesting to, to have this program with, Indians, with refugees, because not only Greece, but many countries in Europe face the same problem as us. Yes. Uh, we will uh, become a member of a network that starts to offer the program to immigrants and refugees. Also, they have now a program in France, the Science Center in France. We know that uh, uh, Science Center in Poland has the same program. Mm -hmm. Most refugees and immigrants, and uh, some other science centers that uh, are uh, in the south east Europe. Great. So, that, please. That, that this become a part of program in uh, the European Science Center because we are all uh, in the same. Uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, we all are facing the same problem. Great. Well, thank you. I, I, if there's anything else that you want to add now, this is the time for you to say this is your final thoughts on this, because after that we, 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 we're going to stop. But uh, first, before we do that, again, I'd like to congratulate you for this initiative and, 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 and make sure that, that we uh, promote this as much as we can in our own networks for uh, this example. But please, if you want to say final words, you're very welcome to do so now. Okay, then, uh, final words. Um, then uh, first I'd like to say thank you for being with us, giving us the opportunity to be with us and to share some thoughts uh, for this uh, problem which is, uh, we are facing. Uh, as you know, we are, in, we are in the middle of a financial crisis and it's very important that people that they are facing the financial crisis the humanity and solidarity 
forced other people from other countries with a different religion and different culture. This is uh, what we earn, and this is, uh, let's say, great profit that we have as community and as a country. Thank you very much for hosting us, and uh, I will do that. Thank you very much, Walter. And thank you for this very positive message. I wish you all the best in the future of this. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.